According to Professor John Hawkes, the evolution of larger brains has had a uniquely important role in the ideas about human origins. Large brains use a lot of energy, and they take a long time to grow and develop. Anthropologists long assumed that early humans met such costs by expanding their niche, to use a broader and broader array of resources. Any hominids that lacked intellectual and technological abilities could not have survived long, in the same geographic range as larger, brained humans. Moreover, scientists have suggested that larger-brained hominids were able to find and eat more high-quality foods, prompting the evolution of smaller teeth. Anthropologists have also suggested that processing foods, using tools and fire, caused the human lineage to evolve smaller teeth. Therefore, the underlying idea is that smarter hominins found ways to sustain themselves that substituted cleverness and food processing for tooth wear, so that larger brains and smaller teeth came to be related to each other. But Homo naledi violates this idea. Homo naledi was similar to modern humans in its tooth sizes, and had substantially smaller molar teeth than species like Homo habilis or even African Homo erectus. Only in complete isolation, such as on an island like Homo floresiensis, might this small brain size have remained viable. There is plenty of evidence for brain differentiation between Homo naledi and other contemporary hominins, but there is almost no evidence for ecological niche differentiation. So, how did Homo naledi survive for so long, during a time when everything was on the menu for meat-eating hominids, including other humans? The discovery of Homo naledi and other fossils has caused us to re-examine many entrenched assumptions about human evolution. Homo naledi existed near the border of humanity, so different from us in many ways, yet in some ways familiar. Understanding the place these ancient humans in the human journey may uncover some of the mysterious deep parts of our shared behavioral capacities. But to do this, we must find new ways to explore new hypotheses using both the fossil record of human ancestors and the archaeological record of their behavior. This process will take us beyond old assumptions of how human evolution happened into a richer realm of new evidence. Several human species walked the Earth 200,000 years ago, but now there is just one. The Neanderthals were stocky hunters adapted to Europe's cold steppes. Their cousins, the Denisovans, inhabited Asia, while more primitive Homo erectus survived in Indonesia. Was Homo naledi a victim of modern human activity? Unlike previous extinction events caused by natural phenomena, the current extinction is undeniably driven by human activity. This is not an indictment of humanity, but just a reality of nature. Several short, small-brained species survived alongside them, Homo naledi in South Africa, Homo luzonensis in the Philippines, and Homo floresiensis in Indonesia, by 30,000 years ago, they were all gone. And the disappearance of these other species resembles a mass extinction. We are often fed anthropomorphic images of archaic humans, with features that make them appear like us. But there is no archaeological evidence to prove exactly what they looked like. Attempts to extract DNA from their bones have so far been unsuccessful. There is no evidence that they created tools or used fire, and their inclusion in our genus is not without controversy. Their teeth are extremely worn, suggesting that they did not cook or otherwise prepare their foods. But there's no obvious environmental catastrophe, volcanic eruption, climate change, or asteroid impact, driving it. Instead, the extinction's timing suggests they were caused by the spread of a new species, evolving at least 300,000 years ago, Homo sapiens. The incompleteness of the Middle Stone Age fossil record in Africa makes it hard to test these ideas. This is called the muddle in the middle, and it is frequently referenced in scientific literature. In Europe, the only place with a relatively complete archaeological record, fossils show that within a few thousand years of our arrival, Neanderthals vanished. Today we look up at the stars, and wonder if we're alone in the universe. In science fiction, we wonder what it might be like to meet other intelligent species like us. 
It's profoundly sad to think that we once did meet other intelligent beings, and now they are gone. But why would our ancestors wipe out archaic humans? It is exceedingly unlikely that when we met another species in the same ecological niche, we would just live and let live. That is just not how the human animal behaves, unfortunately. Homo sapiens are a uniquely dangerous species. But we are most dangerous to other human populations, because we compete for resources and land. History is full of examples of people warring, displacing, and wiping out other groups over territory. Like language or tool use, a capacity for, and tendency to engage in group violence is arguably an intrinsic, instinctive part of human nature. There's little reason to think that early Homo sapiens were less territorial, less violent, less intolerant, or less human than we are today. Modern humans weren't always alone on our branch of the primate evolutionary tree. Out of Africa theory states that modern humans evolved in Africa, and specifically South Africa. But there is a problem with this theory. Evolutionary principle states that two species cannot evolve in the same ecological niche. There are some that will counter this principle, and say that sapiens and Nalidi occupied different niches. With sapiens living on the savanna and hunting, while Nalidi was collecting roots and berries in the forest. But sapiens also collected roots and berries, so this separate niche theory is problematic. Competitive interactions among the populations of two species will lead to the exclusion of one of the species, when the niche of the superior competitor encompasses the niche of the inferior competitor. This is known as the competitive exclusion principle. Indeed, the archaeologist who discovered Homo nalidi has frequently questioned the idea that this species and our species could have co-evolved in southern Africa. He has issued a paper questioning the date of the Florisbad skull, which is dated to between 294,000 and 224,000 years old, and appears to be from a very early modern human. Homo nalidi occupied southern Africa at this time and their remains are found only 400 kilometers from the site of Florisbad, where the oldest Homo sapien skull in southern Africa was found. The hominids known as Homo nalidi had a long run. Evidence suggests they emerged at least 1 million years ago and may have persisted up to as recently as 200,000 years ago in South Africa. The existence of cooperative violence in male chimps suggests that war predates the evolution of humans. Archaic human skeletons show patterns of trauma consistent with warfare, such as bashed in skulls. Sophisticated tools and hunting weapons gave Homo sapiens an advantage. The arsenal of early Homo sapiens included projectile weapons like javelins and spear throwers, boomerangs and clubs. Complex tools and culture would have helped early Homo sapiens efficiently harvest a wider range of animals and plants, feeding larger tribes and giving our species a strategic advantage in numbers, and we occupied every available ecological niche. But cave paintings, carvings, and musical instruments hint at something far more dangerous, a sophisticated capacity for abstract thought and communication. The ability to cooperate, plan, strategize, manipulate and deceive may have been our ultimate weapon. Scientists assume Homo nalidi simply lost the evolutionary race against modern humans. But their disappearance may be a bit more complex. Why did they go to such great lengths to hide their dead in a vast cave system? If you find this video to be compelling, Please click the subscribe button, share the video, destroy the like button, and leave a comment. This really helps the algorithm push the video out to a much larger audience. Thank you. Indeed, Homo nalidi lived at around the same time as early humans, and dating puts the famed hominid in South Africa as recently as 236,000 years ago. But does the age of the bones help to work out where Homo nalidi fits in the human evolutionary tree? It probably depends on what anthropologist you ask. Based purely on its strange anatomy, Homo nalidi seems to belong somewhere near the very base of the true human family tree, an idea suggested in some studies of the fossils. 
but we know that the first archaic humans appeared more than 2 million years ago. If Homo naledi is just 300,000 years old, some researchers might argue that it can't belong to the base of our family tree, because it's too young. Perhaps it had a modern-looking ancestor and later evolved primitive-looking features. But it is still perfectly possible that Homo naledi really does belong somewhere near the base of our human evolutionary tree. The species might have evolved more than 2 million years ago, as one of the earliest true humans, and then survived unchanged, for hundreds of thousands of years. Homo naledi might even be like a human version of the coelacanth, a primitive fish with ancestors that first appeared 400 million years ago, but that is still found in oceans today. A few years' excavations in an underground cave in South Africa produced new Homo naledi fossils, including a skull of an adult male. Because Homo naledi fossils be as young as 236,000 years old, it raises questions about how human evolution occurred. Fossils of the human-like species with some puzzlingly ancient skeletal quirks are surprisingly young, its discoverers say. It now appears that this hominid, dubbed Homo naledi, inhabited southern Africa, the so-called cradle of humankind, around the dawn of Homo sapiens. Homo naledi achieved worldwide acclaim as a possibly pivotal player in the evolution of the human genus. Retrieved from an underground chamber in South Africa. Fossils of this species were initially thought to be anywhere from 900,000 to at least 1.8 million years old. The younger age for Homo naledi resolves one mystery about these cave fossils. However, it doesn't answer questions about how long ago the species first appeared and exactly when it died out. What is now known is that Homo naledi skeletons somehow ended up in Dinaledi chamber, part of South Africa's rising star cave system between 236,000 and 335,000 years ago. In one paper, two methods of measuring the concentration of natural uranium and other radioactive elements, and damage caused by those elements over time, provided key age estimates for three Homo naledi teeth. A thin sheet of rock deposited by flowing water just above the fossils was also dated. A paper by paleoanthropologist John Hawkes describes 131 newly discovered Homo naledi fossils from a second underground cave. The finds come from at least three individuals and include an adult male's partial skeleton comparable in completeness to Luce's famous 3.2 million year old Australopithecus skeleton from East Africa. Both of these specimens consist of about 40% of the skeleton. Scientists say the discoveries support their remarkable suggestion that Homo naledi deliberately put bodies of the dead in rising stars' underground chambers. The team says there are no signs that either predatory animals or streams carried Homo naledi corpses into the caves. Skeletons from both underground chambers display the same distinctive pattern of features. Signs that they all belong to Homo naledi, not to Homo erectus or any other previously identified human species. These features include relatively small, orange-sized brains and curved fingers like those of Homo species that lived around 2 million years ago. As well as wrists, hands, legs, feet and body sizes comparable to those of Neanderthals and modern humans. Although the finds are remarkably young, Homo naledi's ancient-looking characteristics suggest that the hominid originated near the root of our genus, 2 million years ago or more. That would make this species a possible ancestor or close relative of Homo erectus, which dates to around that time. Moreover, the oldest Homo fossils date to 2.8 million years ago in East Africa. A second possibility is that Homo naledi originated only a few hundred thousand years ago, and is most closely related to early Homo sapiens or other Homo species that may have inhabited southern Africa at that time. A relatively late origin for Homo naledi would suggest it evolved from larger-brained ancestors. But that would be unusual. Scientists have long held that the brain only became larger as human species evolved. But that proposed scenario has some parallels to Indonesia's Homo floresiensis, better known as the Hobbit. These hominids, whose remains date to between about 100,000 and 60,000 years ago, had chimp-sized brains, short statures and, like Homo naledi, some skull features resembling early species. 
scientists believe that the hobbits either evolved smaller brains or retained small brains after splitting from a much older Homo species in Africa, such as Homo habilis. But unlike Homo nalidi, the hobbits lived on an island where a lack of competition with other Homo species assisted their survival. Importantly, it's unclear how Homo nalidi survived in Africa alongside larger-brained Homo species, perhaps even Homo sapiens. Although, occasional interbreeding in southern Africa, similar to what occurred later among Homo sapiens, Neanderthals and Denisovans in Eurasia may have benefited Homo nalidi. DNA from Homo nalidi would help clarify the species' evolutionary status. But attempts to extract DNA from the fossils have so far failed, so we have to speculate. Some anthropologists believe that Homo nalidi points to a diversity of African human species that once lived south of the equator in Africa. Moreover, it's unlikely human evolution proceeded in a straight line, from one species to the next, in a specific part of subequatorial Africa. Nonetheless, some paleoanthropologists familiar with the new species interpret the findings differently. The astonishingly young age for a human species with several ancient-looking features suggests Homo nalidi was the sole survivor of an array of much older, closely related species, proposes Chris Stringer of the Natural History Museum in London. He also says that Homo nalidi probably made some of the many stone tools found at southern African sites, dating to around 300,000 years ago that have not yielded hominid fossils. The hominid could lie close to the origin of the genus Homo, suggesting that this is a relic species, retaining many primitive traits from a much earlier time. Professor Stringer doubts a creature with a brain size close to that of a gorilla disposed of its dead deep within a pitch black, hard to navigate cave system, especially since the controlled use of fire for torches was probably also needed, unless they could see in the dark. However complex Homo nalidi's behavior may have been, ancient aspects of its anatomy rule it out as an ancestor of Homo sapiens, says the discoverer of Lucy, who also argues that Homo sapiens originated in East Africa. Researchers generally place that evolutionary turning point, wherever it occurred, at between 200,000 and 300,000 years ago. The rising star cave hominids, much like the hobbits, evolved in isolation, and have no relevance to the origins of modern humans, say most researchers. Still, even a largely isolated Homo nalidi population may have occasionally had dalliances with other Homo species in southern Africa. Later human evolution is far more complex than has generally been thought. So, what happened to Homo nalidi in the end? There are no easy answers to this question yet. But since the fossils are just 200,000 to 300,000 years old there is at least one possible scenario. If those early Homo sapiens reached southern Africa shortly afterwards, they might have caused the extinction of Homo nalidi. Again, there is precedent for this scenario. The fossil record elsewhere in the world shows that Homo sapiens rapidly spread across the old world. As it did so, we arrived in areas already populated by ancient humans species like the Neanderthals and Denisovans. Within a few thousand years of Homo sapiens arriving in these new areas, the indigenous species of ancient humans disappeared, apparently outcompeted by Homo sapiens. Even the hobbit, Homo floresiensis, seems to have suffered this fate. The most recent information suggests it went extinct 50,000 years ago, about the same time that Homo sapiens arrived in that part of the world. But Homo nalidi might have the dubious honor of being the first ancient human species to have been driven to extinction by the spread of our species. The only question is exactly when this happened. But this is still speculation at the moment, and controversy and disagreement is nothing new in paleoanthropology.